How do you use the Singapore Savings Bonds? Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel, I'm Josh. Today I'll be giving you 3 advanced strategies for you to consider. The first strategy that you really need to consider is to clear off your loans. That is, if you have any mortgage loans or car loans, it is far better to clear off these loans before you buy a Singapore Savings Bonds. The simple reason is that the Singapore Savings Bonds gives only 2% rate of return and if you're not familiar with it, I will leave a link below so that you can check more on it first before you proceed the rest of the video. So clearing loans is a definite way to save yourself interest costs and more often than not, these loans will be running at 2, 3, if not 4% per annum and you don't be making 2% at one hand and yet losing 2, 3, 4% on the other hand. That does not make a lot of financial sense. So if that resonates with you, the first thing that you should look for is to clear off any loans that you have before making an investment into the Singapore Savings Bonds. The second strategy has actually some basic logic to it. And before I dive onto the concept, I'd like to invite you to leave a comment below on whether you've actually felt yourself being more spendthrift whenever your bank account has a bit more cash savings inside. This topic is regarding financial thermostat, which means to say if you have suddenly more cash in your bank account, you suddenly feel that sensation of wealth and you actually be more spendthrift. You'll be looking for a better food to eat, a better vacation. And this financial thermostat is actually a concept that has been elaborated very broadly. And this concept helps you to understand why at certain periods of time it's better to keep more cash outside of your bank account than inside it. Because if it's inside, you'll be looking to spend it away. Hence, the Singapore Savings Bond is actually a very good vehicle because it's liquid and whereby you can actually park some of your savings outside of your bank account and not be a victim of this financial thermostat concept. So if you get it, the, con the truth is you have to move out enough money from your bank account and use Singapore Savings Bonds as a vehicle to do so. The third advanced strategy that I have to share with you today is actually to choose wisely which account you want to invest in this bond with. As you know, the maximum that anyone can invest in the Singapore Savings Bond today is $200,000. So if there's a choice between cash versus SRS, I think the answer is quite simple. That is to always use cash to invest into it because it's liquid and use SRS for longer term investments. When you look long term, there are a lot of tools in, in the SRS available market that can get you a much higher rate of return than 2% itself. I'll leave some suggestions in the links below, so do look out for them. Because you have stayed to the end of the video, I have this further tip for you and it's a question that I get very commonly. That is, if interest rates continue to rise, should you buy into the Singapore Savings Bonds today? The quick answer is yes, because if interest rates rise down the road, say in one or two years time, and the interest rates given by the Singapore Savings Bonds then substantially higher, you can actually sell out on your current investments right now and buy a new issue at that point of time. That there could be a potential to make an extra spread in terms of interest rates earned. So do keep that in mind. You can always sell and buy a new issue at any point in time. I hope you have enjoyed this video and benefited from my key strategies on the Singapore Savings Bonds. So do click on the subscribe button below because I'll be launching videos every week on financial topics and help you succeed financially.